Good morning, Purity family. Good morning, Facebook campus. Good morning to conference call conference. And good morning to everyone in the sanctuary this morning. This is Deacon Watson uh, bringing you this morning's Sunday school lesson. Uh, the lesson is titled, Weeds Among the Wheat. Weeds Among the Wheat. Wheat, I mean. Uh, I, I know a couple of years ago, uh, there was a guest minister that was, pastor that was here, and he did a lesson on uh, weeds and tares. And uh, the question he asked us was, uh, are you wheat or are you tares? Are you wheat or are you a weed, in other words? Uh, so this morning, we're going to find out what we are. I know what I am. I'm going to find out what you are. And you all can tell me what I am later. <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, let us just uh, open up with a, a word of prayer. Kind Heavenly Father, uh, I sincerely thank you this morning, Father, for uh, first of all allowing me to wake up to breathe this fresh air, Father. And I thank you, Father, for uh, uh, let me uh, have traveling mercy this morning. There was no problems. So I thank you for that. I don't take anything lightly, Father. And Father, I thank you for allowing me to be the one to present this lesson to the Sunday school this morning, Father. I ask you just to be with me, Father. Lead me and guide me uh, in, in the words that I say, Father, and, and let those words be from your, your, your book, uh, the Bible that you left for us to read, uh, your basic instructions before we leave this earth, Father. Uh, and let me uh, not change uh, any uh, of the words. Let me uh, teach them in spirit and in truth, Father. Father, I ask you to bless our pastor this morning, Reverend Dr. Robin A. Toogood II, Father. Uh, we are so thankful that we have a Bible teaching pastor uh, who doesn't teach us from uh, the Washington Post, uh, New York Times, or anything else, Father. He, he, he teaches us strictly from your word, Father, and we do appreciate that, Father. Father, I ask you to bless our, my purity family, Father, who I love dearly. Uh, continue to bless us, Father, as we go forth to do what you would have us to do, Father. All these blessings I ask in the name of your loving son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, as a quick review from last week, we talked about uh, uh, sowing seeds. Uh, uh, and um, Deaconess Thomas uh, gave you a description of a, a something that Jesus used all the time when he, uh, one thing about Jesus, and I think I was discussing this with uh, Dick and this Ray yesterday, we were having a discussion. Uh, whenever you challenge Jesus, he could come back at you quick. He could come with a story real quick, you know. Uh, so a parable, parable that he used, parables, it was just a simple story that he used to illustrate a moral and spiritual lesson to you. Uh, you know, you, you want an example of what I'm talking about? You, your head kind of thick, you can't really understand what I'm trying to say to you. Let me, let me break it down to you. That's what he did, you know. Uh, so, uh, so, of course, this week again, we're going to talk about, uh, well, we, we're going to use one of, a couple of parables that he used. Uh, and then uh, uh, he talked about tares in, in one of his examples. And tares were nothing but weed. Uh, now, the tares in the Bible, they, they were injurious weed resembling wheat. Uh, 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 and, you know, a, a weed is just a wild plant, something that I probably have growing, <laughs> that I look out my window saying, I got to get them weeds. And I, the next week I say, I, and I talked about that yesterday, I got to stop procrastinating, okay? Because uh, uh, soon enough, the weeds take over your whole, whole yard, okay? Uh, and of course, wheat is uh, it's a it's a very important staple to us. 
the food staple. Uh, from that, you know, you, we get our flour, we get uh, foods such as bread, uh, noodles, pasta, cakes, which I don't need, cookies, which I don't need, pastries, which I don't need. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I'm calling myself out, so uh, I didn't put no other name to it. It's, it's me. <laughs> Uh, so, so now we, we have a background of, you know, of some of the things that uh, we're talking about. Now, last week, uh, Dickness Thomas talked about sowing seeds, uh, and some of the seeds that were sown uh, went by the wayfile, wayside. You know, they, they, <laughs> they, they tossed them out, and, and the birds came and ate them. Uh, uh, and then some seeds fell on stony places. Uh, which was not much fertile ground. Uh, and so uh, they were probably burnt up by the sun. Uh, and some fell among, among thorns. Uh, and then some did fall on fertile ground, good ground. So that, that just to give us a little background of where we were last week. So our lesson this morning picks up at, uh, continues in chapter 13. Uh, it picks up at uh, verses 24 through 30 and 36 through 43. Uh, verse 24 says, Another parable uh, uh, he put forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, the enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, did not you sow good seed in the field? So where did the tares, where have the tares come from? Uh, 28 says, He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? Uh, verse 29 says, But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, you may root up also the wheat with them. Our focal verse 30 says, Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say that the reapers gather, uh, reapers gather, ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles and burn them but gather the wheat into my barn okay uh, verse 36 says then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house and his disciples came to him saying declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field he answered and said unto them he that soweth the good seed is the son of man now let me stop. Who is the son of man? Say it loud. All right. Now, okay, so we, we got that established. Uh, 38 says, the field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. Who is the good seed? Children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. Who are the tares? Yeah, right. And the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be an end of the world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and then and them which do inequity. 42 says, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire, there shall be wailing and gashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as a sun in the kingdom of the, their father. Who have ears to hear, let him hear. Okay, so, uh, so we, we see that uh, Jesus has compared uh, the kingdom of heaven to, to a, a field of fertile soil uh, where, where the, the good seeds are sown. Uh, and we know that at, at nighttime, you know, the devil is busy. And so the devil wants to come by and destroy your field. So he, he throws seeds of tares uh, to grow with the wheat. 
Uh, and of course, the servants, uh, once the, the, the fruit spring, it starts to spring up, uh, he, he sees the wheat growing, but they also see this weed growing also. Uh, and they go to the, uh, to the householder and ask him, you know, well, hey, what happened? Uh, uh, did, you, did you sow any weeds with, with, the, uh, with the wheat? Um, and, and of course, the farmer says, says to them, no, I didn't. Uh, that, was, that was probably my enemy that did that. Uh, now, you know, if we, we put, look at ourselves today, uh, the enemy is always busy, okay? And you, you could be do, trying your best to do good, and, and they'll come and try to corrupt you, uh, pull you into their sin. Uh, so th this is what we have to guard against. And, and that was Jesus' message, actually, that uh, 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 the farmer told, told his workers, no, uh, I know I sow good seed. I didn't have no weed in my bag, you know. Uh, you know. And I, I can remember, you know, when I used to go to the country and, and see um, my grandparents uh, planting their little garden. They had a little bag, and they would just, you know, so... So they, they didn't have no seed of weeds. Uh, they, they had good seed in their bag, okay? So and that's what the uh, farmer is indicating. No, I, uh, I, I know I had uh, good seed, you know. I went to Ace Hardware. I got those seeds. Uh, Ace Hardware, if I got weeds, uh, we're going to have a problem, okay? Uh, so anyway... Uh, the, the, the farmer indicates that it, it was an enemy that, that uh, threw the weeds uh, into his, his, his fertile ground. Now, uh, and of course, the, the, his dedicated workers want to know, well, what, uh, can we go and pull up those uh, weeds now? Uh, and being a smart farmer, he said, no, let them grow together. He said, because if you pull up... Uh, these, these things look just alike. If you pull the tares up, the weed up, you're going to pull up the wheat also, which we, we need. So just let them grow. Uh, and uh, so he said, let, let them both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I, I will say to the reapers, who we just heard in, in the previous verses, the, the reapers are, are the, the angels. Uh, to gather them together first, the tares, and bind them to bundles and burn them. Uh, and then gather the good wheat that came from the good seed. We're going to put those in the barn. Now, you know what? The barn is going to be the heaven for us. Okay? Uh, uh, so, uh, in this parable, like I said, the, the servants realize, you know, everything that happened and, and notify the farmer. And the farmer, you know, tells them exactly what they're to do. Uh, and in doing this lesson, I thought about uh, a, a couple of verses from the Bible that, uh, that showed that, number one, that the farmer had faith in what he had done. He had faith you know, and, and the Lord, he had faith in his uh, fertile soil. Uh, in Hebrews uh, 1, it's familiar to it. it, says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Uh, uh, I mean, he knew where his faith lied, okay? Uh, in Isaiah 54, 17, said, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt be condemned. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, said the Lord. The Lord is going to protect you, and he knew that, okay? Uh, 2 Corinthians says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of the strongholds casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Devil's trying to get us not to believe, but oh no, that's not going to be true. Uh, 
and, and bringing into captivity every thought of the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience and when your obedience is, is fulfilled. Uh, so we, we have a mighty God at our back. Uh, he got outside, he got out front. Okay, he, we, we're covered. We just have to remain in obedience to him. Uh, now separating the wheat from the tares or slash the righteous from the unrighteous. Uh, then Jesus sent the multitude away and he went to the house and his disciples came to him. They, they wanted, can you explain to us, Jesus, uh, what this parable is that you're using about the tares? Uh, and uh, of course, and, and look what Jesus said. He said, uh, the good seed is the son of man. That's me, Jesus. I'm the good seed. Uh, the field is the rest of the world. The good seed uh, are the children of the kingdom. That's you and I. If we're living right, okay? We, we're going to make some mistakes, you know, but we, we have a, a, a great weapon that we can use called repentance when we mess up, okay? There's a song that I sing, got to clean up what I messed up. I'm going to start my life all over again. Okay? Um, now, so, our task as wheat, that's you and I, is not let the tares overtake us. We have to be careful who we lean on. Okay? Uh, you can't just lean on everybody. You can't even let everybody read this word to you. Yeah, we're, we're required to read the word for ourselves. That way, if I'm up here uh, teaching and I uh, uh, say something wrong, whether purposely or, or you know, just innocently, it's okay to correct me. Uh, but you have to know this word for yourself. You know, you, you cannot depend on, on your pastor, uh, to, to uh, tell you what the word means, even though he does an excellent job. But we need, before he starts preaching, we should know part of it already. You know, so, you know, we have to study to show ourselves approved. So, uh, like I said, so our task is not to let the tares overtake us. We must continue to do what is pleasing to God we must continue spreading the gospel. And remember, we are the gospel spreading wheat. That's what we are. We're the gospel spreading wheat. So, in other words, when we leave out of church this morning, we need to make sure that uh, we don't close that bag up where we have the seed. We need to leave that bag open. You know, so, you know, we, we, we should be able to spread the seed to somebody today, tomorrow. And then also we need to let, don't turn that light off that, 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 that you have on, that light that shines. Uh, yeah. That light is what's going to draw people to you. Sometimes you don't have to look for somebody to, to spread the word to. They'll come to you. But your light got to be on. And I'm not talking about the red light. Okay? Uh, we need that bright white light. Uh, so uh, we have to study the word, we have to spread the word, we have to live the word. You know, just because I'm in church <laughs> don't mean I'm, uh, I'm all that holy. People are going to look at me uh, when I get in my car. Uh, and then I, the first thing I do when I get in my car, I grab my beer and take a drink. I say, wait a minute, what's something wrong with that picture? Okay. Or if I'm, I'm out doing something, and now he knows better than that. Even though now, you watching me, you should be watching yourself. You, you shouldn't be trying to judge me. But I could cause you not to come to Christ by, by teaching a good word and then living a bad word. Okay? Uh, 
uh, so we have to study the word and we have to spread the word, we have to live the word. And the one thing that we have to remember, it's not our job to, to, to uh, move, uh, to, to separate that tear from us, really, you know. Yeah, we can control us, but we can't control that tear. You know whose job that is? That's Jesus' job. Jesus, and this is what the lesson is really all about, Jesus will separate us, the wheat of wheat, from the evil one, the tares. Now, and the end result, uh, uh, sin will be no more. You know, the, the 41 said, uh, the Son of Man shall bring forth his angels and shall gather out of the kingdom all things that offend and which do not and which do inequity. So sin will be no more because you know, Jesus is in control. The evildoers will be gathered by, by the angels and the Son of Man, Jesus, will be in charge of the time of uh, reaping and judgment. Uh, he will separate the wheat from the tares. Now, a question I have for you, uh, and I'm asking this question because I've asked question, this question before. Uh, why do the righteous seem to suffer more and the wicked seem to prosper more? Um, uh, I've asked that question, and, and this lesson kind of gave me the answer. Uh, uh, and, and it's a simple answer. Well, for one thing, they're not going to prosper forever. You see, we, we're living to get to that eternal glory. That's what we're living for. Now, we may suffer a while down here, but when we get to that eternal heaven, you know, where the streets are paved with gold, and, no, and we get to have that milk and honey, okay, and, and see our loved ones, you know. Uh, see, that's what we're living for. Uh, so the answer is that they will not prosper forever. They will join the devil and his angels in the eternal fire prepared for them, which is the second death, the lake of fire. Uh, and, and Jesus said that. Uh, look, he said in 42, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There should be wailing and gashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath hears, ears to hear, let him hear. So that's what's going to happen to the ones that fall on the evil side. Now, the good news is that the wheat, which is us, will not suffer the same fate. Uh, we will have an inner glory, an eternal fire that allows us to shine as bright as the sun. We will fellowship in the land of the saved. Uh, now, who have ears to hear, let, us, let him hear, which is the last portion of final verse. It does not refer to your physical ears, okay? It's talking about your heart, okay? Uh, uh, it refers to hearing God's message with your heart and, and hearing and believing and obeying his spiritual truth. Uh, I had a couple more scriptures, but I'm just going to read one, uh, which is Matthew 25, 41 through 43. It says, then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, ye, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. I don't want to go there. Okay. For I was hungry, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye Ye took me not in, naked, and ye clothed me not, sick and in prison, and you didn't even visit me. Uh, I've got a little time. I'm going to go to this other verse, Matthew 25, 34. It says, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, 
Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall he gather all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd <coughs> divided his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, and heard the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. He, he's preparing a home for us. We got to live right. We got to do what we're supposed to do. We got to study. We have to love, love your fellow man as you would love yourself. You have to help people. And look, you, you can't help everybody that you walk by, but you can help somebody. So in conclusion, God is aware of wickedness, but he chooses to leave wickedness for right now, unjudged. Because like I said, that's not our job. God's going to do the judging. So we should not be more in a hurry than God to punish the wicked. Because this is what's going to happen. If God took immediate vengeance on a person for every sin committed, the children of the kingdom would be punished daily. God will do things in his own time. We and our loved ones must continue to be wheat and not we. That's what we need to concentrate on. And that ends my lesson for this morning. I hope that uh, you were able to get something from it. Uh, I can say I enjoyed the lesson. Uh, I made myself happy when I was reading this. <laughs> it gave me a goal. My goal is to be what? Wheat. To be that nice guy. To help others. To love others. Even when they don't love me. So I thank you all for your time. Uh, kind Heavenly Father, uh, come to humbly, before you, humbly, humbly before you, Father, just to say thank you for allowing me to, to teach this lesson, Father. I pray that all I said was, was truthful and that I did not mislead or guide anyone in the wrong direction, Father. We ask you to bless Purity Baptist Church now as we prepare for our morning worship, Father. Uh, bless uh, past, uh, Reverend Dr. Robin, they too good to second, Father, as he prepares to give us a mighty word this morning. Uh, bless our children who will be serving this morning, our musicians, uh, audio-visual department, Father. Father, we, we love you and honor you, and we place no one above you, Father. Father, just continue to lead and guide us in the way that we should go. All these blessings I ask in the name of your loving Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Certainly we praise and honor our God for how he's allowed us to enter into his sanctuary with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise and how we are going to be thankful unto him and bless his name. Amen. Uh, we are certainly delighted and we thank God for our Sunday school lesson uh, that has come to us so boldly and with clarity. We appreciate you, Deacon Watson, for that. Our ushers are uh, passing now to receive any Sunday school offering. Uh, that you may have. Uh, I hear people say Sunday school is worth getting up for, but I don't see them putting nothing in the trays. So I don't know whether it's worth getting up for or not. Amen, amen, amen. Bless the Lord. So, uh, so we, just want to, um, we just want to thank the Lord for what he has done and continues to do on our behalf. Amen. Uh, we thank God for our Sunday school, and they know uh, that immediately following this uh, service, I will, we'll have a little 15 minute break and then I'll call the Sunday school together uh, for about 15 to 20 minutes so we can have a meeting uh, to begin our thought. That meeting will just be a beginning of our thought. We'll have to have a Saturday time or another time that we really uh, delve into things, but I want to have some beginning thoughts uh, to go out 
uh, so that we'll have the opportunity to know what direction we are going uh, as it relates to Sunday school and the worth that we place on it uh, here at Purity. We don't want anything that we do here to just simply be lip service. We don't want it to be lip service. We don't want to say it's worth getting up for just with our lips. And then we don't get, because if it's worth getting up for, I mean waking up for, then it's also worth getting up off of some of our finances and getting up off some of our energy and getting up off of some of our volunteerism to make sure that it's full. Amen? Amen. So we want to, we want to be certain that we, are, that we are doing that as the Lord would allow. We are so grateful to God for what he has done and how he has assembled us together today and how he has created what we will have in worship. And what a joy it is to be back uh, with you this Sunday. Uh, I was not with you last Sunday uh, as I was in New Orleans, Louisiana. Went there for, the, uh, for uh, family reunion and, and some rest, but ended up having to preach at the Zion Hill Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, but, it, but it was all right. We thank God for it. Amen. I thank God that he uh, has trusted me enough with the gospel that he allows me to preach. And he doesn't do, see, see I, I appreciate what Paul said. Paul said he put me in the ministry. Huh? I, 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 I believe that. See, some of us, some people just go because they want to see themselves greater. They want to do greater things. But, but then there's some of us who God put in the ministry, and when he puts you in it, then he trusts you to do his work. And, 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 and the good thing about it is when he puts you in it, then he gives you all you need to make your calling and election sure. And as long as you're making it sure, he'll use you to his glory. Not because you're perfect. Not because you're sinless. Not because you dot every I and cross every T, but because you are willing to make your calling and election sure. You're willing to do it. My Lord, I'm preaching already. Let us pray. Most holy, all wise, eternal God, our Father, we thank you for the privilege that we have to be in your presence. God, we thank you for all that you have done in this place. We thank you for your power, your presence. We thank you for all that you're doing in our midst. And God, we come to you right now, just as humbly as we know how, saying thank you. Thank you, God, for the ability to wake up this morning. And thank you for activity of our limbs. And thank you for roof over our head. Thank you for food on our table, clothes that we could put on our back. Thank you for getting us here today, oh God. Some of us rode the bus. Some of us got Uber. Some of us drove here. Some of us walked here. But God, whatever way we got here, we thank you that you provided and made provision for us to be here today, God. We thank you, God, that you gave us another opportunity where we are able to get ourselves right, oh God. Another day that somebody wished they had seen. But God, we thank you that you gave us this privilege. And now, God, we pray that you would clean us up. Undoubtedly, through the last time we were together, we've done some things that we shouldn't have done. We've said some things that we shouldn't have said. But God, we ask that you would clean us up right now. Make us what you would have us to be. So that we can truly be holy thine. God, we pray for the choir, the musicians, all of those that are on the service. We pray that your anointing would fall afresh and anew in this place. That anointing that destroys yokes. That anointing that removes burdens. That anointing that carries us forward. Somebody came sick. Let them feel your healing. Somebody came depressed. Give them beauty for their ashes. Somebody came living beneath life. Raise them up just like Jesus raised up on the third day. Help us, God, to be more like you. In Jesus' name we pray.
love you, Jesus. Deep down in my heart. Deep, deep down, down. Deep down in my heart. How many of you love him that much? How many of you love him deep down in your heart? Don't fool me now. Don't play with me. Do you really love him? I mean, have he done anything for you? Has he been good to you? Has he, don't, don't play with me now. Have he opened doors for you? Do you love him deep down? Deep down in our hearts. Amen. Uh, children, I think you ought to do that one more time. I think you ought to show us how to do it and see if we can do it with you. We want we to we show him how we can do it deep down in our heart. And I think I got a few people that want to go there. That's it, Sister Milligan. That's it, Dick Miss Milligan. Take it on down. Take it on down. Deep down in our heart. them knees can do <laughs> them knees still working ain't they sometimes you look at the children you say I wish I could do that but today you prove to yourself that you can do it and they're not the only one that love him deep deep down down but I love him deep deep down down deep down in my heart and the good thing about it is even if you couldn't do it that way Dignis Millen Milligan modified it for us she just she just had those, she sat down, but she, she had those hands going in that shoulder. You might not be able to do everything everybody else can do, but you can modify it to suit you. And you can still give God your very best praise. I don't know how you feel about it, but, but I know he's worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We, 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 we going to the throne of grace now. We're going to have Deacon Robert Henry to come and to lead us to the throne of grace. Amen. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, yes. my strength and my redeemer. Yes. Most gracious, all wise, heavenly Father, Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, it is once again right now, dear God, we come to give you glory. We come to give you honor. We come to give you praise. But right now, dear God, we say thank you. For this moment, dear God, thank you for last night's sleep. Yes. Thank you for this early morning rising. Thanks. But most of all, dear God, we just thank you for Jesus. The lily of the valley. The wheel in the middle of the wheel. Yes. That bar from Gilead. But most of all, that saving Lord. That saving Christ. Who hung on Calvary's cross, bled and died. And did not come down from the cross. Dear God, we just say thank you, thank you, thank you, dear God. Right now, dear God, we, we pray for this waiting congregation, dear God. Yes, Lord, this week is battled to and fro. But our vision, our sight is what? To come to church one more time. Come, Lord, we come to say thank you. Lord, we Pray for that man, woman, boy, girl. Knows nothing about your miraculous power. For dear God, we just thank you. You make the impossible possible each and every day. For dear God, right now we pray for the preacher of the morning, dear God. 
We pray that you build him up, Lord, as he breaks the bread of life, fresh and anew. Yes, dear Lord, we come before you as an empty fountain, before a full fountain, dear Lord. Help us, Lord, as only you can. We pray for those that are bereaved, dear God. Yes, dear Lord, we pray for them. For it is true weeping may endure for a night, but joy yes. cometh in the morning. We also pray for those on their beds of affliction, dear God. You know what they stand in the need of. If it be your will, yes. and your will only, Lord, touch them from the top of their heads to the sole of their feet, dear God. For it is true, dear God, you have no hands but our hands. No feet but our feet, dear God. Give us strength, Lord, for you are the hope, dear God. Strengthen us, Lord, as we walk this journey. Mold us, shape us. But we also realize, dear God, there's victory in Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. Unspeakable power. So if it be your will, Lord, power us up. Turn us around. Lead us. Guide us and protect us. It's only you can. All these blessings, yes, and I say, in Jesus' name, our soul says, Amen. Say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. Yes, yes, Lord, yes. We thank God for, for that song and for reminding us that our answer should be, ought to be, 
Yes, Lord. Yes. Amen. We are so grateful for um, what God has done. We are thankful that this week we have had uh, such an eventful week. Many things have gone on, and uh, we thank God for that. We thank him that uh, we had on yesterday, uh, though planning has gone on for quite some time, but on yesterday we had a one-day ashram here at Purity. Amen. We, we thank God for it. We had a wonderful, wonderful gathering of, uh, of, of persons uh, that were here with us, over 65 persons gathered with our children and youth included, and we certainly want to uh, thank God for all of those who uh, made that um, the ashram what it needed to be. Um, I'd like those who are part of that uh, ashram committee, those who are uh, on the 12, if you all would stand please for me. Amen, amen. We thank God, we thank God for you. You all did an excellent job. You may be seated. Director uh, Deacon Minnick, uh, in the ashram, she's supposed to be called Sister Pearl, so uh, uh, Director Sister Pearl, who did an excellent job uh, making sure that this works. Amen. And uh, the good thing about that is that she did it in spite of other little directors thinking they were in charge. I'm talking right. And, uh, and, and, and she still was able to get everything uh, done the way that it needed to be done. And uh, we thank God for, for that. I think that we had a beautiful day, a beautiful time, and uh, God blessed us uh, for our gathering. Uh, I, I, I started that registration table. I've never seen it so smooth. Ran so smoothly yesterday. And uh, it was a blessing how well that registration ran. And uh, then, I, then I go into the classes. Reverend uh, Bishop Brooks did an excellent job uh, uh, sharing the gospel, sharing the gospel. And uh, then we had our prayer groups, and uh, they, they must have been good because I had to remind them the time was up, so they must have been good. And uh, so we thank God for all of our prayer group leaders uh, and their uh, willingness to serve. And then we thank God for the food that we had. We had to have some lunch. And what, 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 could, Brother O'Neill, won't you, won't you stand up? We, 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 we thank Brother O'Neill. He did an excellent job. Amen. I don't think when we, when, when the, when the planning was, was going on for this and, uh, and, and we were thinking about it and, and persons were talking about what, what might be done. And, uh, and I said, let Brother O'Neill, uh, let's get him to do it because really, when we are when in the ashram, you, you need to be focused on what you're focused on, not everything, not all over every way and everything, try to run every little section. You can't run every section. You can't run every section. Somebody got to be in charge of one section, somebody got to be, but if you're in the kitchen, you're at the registration, you over, you're, over, you, you, you're doing too, sit down. But Brother O'Neill uh, came in and he uh, worked tirelessly to get the, the meal uh, together. And we thank God, we thank God for that. We thank God for that. Uh, and uh, we certainly praise God for that. Uh, Brother O'Neill, we, 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 we are looking forward to our luncheon uh, with our seniors uh, coming up for us, for us uh, soon. We are looking forward uh, for that. And uh, then when I walked in the kitchen, uh, I, I, I just knew and I was going to see uh, Reverend Logan, and she was in there. She loves to prepare food and, and, and uh, be in, in that. Uh, she got our salads together. Then I, uh, Babs left me the punch to do. I, okay, Babs, I see what you're doing. And, uh, and so we, we, we got that together. So we thank God for that. Um, and then uh, we had our time together and, and, and on this side. And so we just had... We, I, I really believe we had a successful day yesterday. Amen. Amen. Uh, so we, 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 we're excited. Uh, I, I think that we will certainly uh, look, to, look to doing uh, another one uh, at some point. Uh, we want to see that happen again uh, so that we can rebuild the energy around 
the ashram. But see, we don't want to go to James Madison to have a joint board meeting. I can have a joint board meeting at Purity. I don't need to go to James Madison to meet with the same folk that I meet with on joint board. I ain't winning no friends. It's okay. If I want to have a joint board meeting, I can just call it right after church. I don't have to go all the way to West Virginia to have joint board meeting with an invited guest. So we've got to build up our attendance. And uh, the way that we do that is expose people to it so that they feel the excitement and the fervor uh, and the fervor for what we are, what we are doing. Uh, so we, we, we thank God for you. That prayer room, I, I'm, just, I'm just anticipating that, that office, I don't know, maybe it was the prayer room the last time you all were here. I don't know what was the prayer room before. But um, that office is typically used to conduct business. I mean, it's been used to conduct. It used to be, that office used to be the pastor's study. That was Reverend Hockett's study. That's why all those shelves, those bookshelves are in there, because that's where he kept his books. That was Reverend Hockett's study before uh, our second pastor, Reverend Wingate, uh, built this building here and put the study over there. But uh, that office has been many things. But yesterday we consecrated it as a prayer room. And I, I'm just looking forward to seeing uh, what will come out of that over time. Because we didn't make that, we didn't put any time limit on that consecration. We didn't say just for today, Lord. We just consecrated it. And so, uh, so we trust God that he will have his way. Uh, in everything. Now, uh, we want to certainly um, look forward to all that will go on next week. We know that the homegoing services for, uh, well, actually, I'll let the church clerk come and she'll give us the announcements. Mrs. Freeman, why don't you come and give us our morning announcements? Good morning, church. Good morning. Reverend Logan will have an announcement following me. Everyone deserves a time of rest and relaxation, a time to refresh and recharge. So does our pastor. Our beloved pastor will take a well-deserved vacation during the month of August, second, third, and fourth Sundays. You can help him truly enjoy his vacation with some special love. If you are attending services, you can use a pew envelope for your monetary donation. Mark the envelope past to goods vacation. Then either personally put it in the pastor's hand or in the collection plate when it is passed. His cash app is dollar sign, capital R, capital A, capital to good, the second. Choose pastor's vacation from menu if you text or give. Checks or money order can be made out directly to Reverend Dr. Robin A. Tugard II and mailed to Purity Baptist Church, 1325 Maryland Avenue, Northeast Washington, D.C., 20002. Your special love gift will be a blessing. This comes from our pastoral support team. The youth ministry will meet briefly after church today to receive the script for the upcoming skit, The Day in the Life of a Christian. You will meet with our, your youth leader, Sister Kelly Ray, in the choir room. Pastor Toogood is inviting everyone to a meeting of the Purity Sunday School today after the 10 a.m. service. If you are a current, former, wannabe Sunday School member, our teacher, please be present to give your input to reviving our Sunday school. Your ideas are important and all are welcome. We have several prayer requests today. Trustee John Emerson is requesting prayer for daughter Alani and wife Kim as they travel to Japan. They began their travels last Wednesday, July 17th. Alani goes to an international baccalaureate school and they try to expose their children to different cultures and countries. 
They try to take a trip to different places every year. They will be visiting four different cities in Japan and will visit some religious temples and other places. They will be experiencing several modes of travel while there and also experiencing the local cuisines of Japan. They will return on July 27. We're asking for their safe travels and an enjoyable and educational trip. A cousin of Pastor Too Good and Trustee Patricia Ritchie, Ms. Jackie Davis, recently had a stroke. The family is asking prayer for Ms. Davis. Sister Kimberly Shaw is asking for prayers for her friend, Ms. Jewel Scales. Mr. Jerome Stewart, the father of Mr. Tyrone Stewart, Deacon Connie Smith's son, suffered a heart attack while driving and passed away. Deacon Smith is asking prayers for her son Tyrone and the Stewart family. Sister Vicki Rogers is asking for prayers from her church family. She had surgery on Tuesday, July 18. She is in the Washington Hospital Center. No visitors at this time. Please keep her lifted in prayer. Sister Sherry Young is now a grandmother. Her son, DeAndre Harrison, now has a son. They welcomed Rowland, Rowland on July 16. Arrangements for Ms. Antoinette Hughes, the sister of Deaconess Betty Adams, are as follows. Homegoing service Monday, July 24, 2023. Viewing from 1 to 2 p.m. Service begins at 2 at the Holy Name Catholic Church, 920 11th Street Northeast, Washington, D.C. Repass immediately following the service. Celebration of life for Sister Barbara Douglas, daughter of the late Deacon Reuben H. Banks, as follows. Homegoing service Friday, July 28, 2023, viewing 10 a.m., service 11 a.m. at the Purity Baptist Church and Urban Center, Reverend Robin A. Tuga II, officiant eulogist. A special note from the pastor. All missionaries are asked to be present and in purple and white if possible for the service by 10.30 a.m. for the tribute. All missionaries are asked to be present in purple and white if possible for the service by 10.30 a.m. for the tribute. Deacon Juanita Lancaster would like to share that the recent tornado that downed trees and flattened homes near Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, along the Nash Edgecombe County line spared her family. No injuries, no property loss. She thanks all those who have shown concern for her family, wanted to let you know that her family is fine, and ask you to pray for those who experienced personal and, personal and property loss. Our known sick and shut-in this morning are Deaconess Angeline Bethay, Brother Jesse Harrison, Sister Fanny Nimmons, Deaconess Elizabeth Sims, Brother Kenneth Tucker, Deaconess Nelling Vail. We do ask you to uh, continue to pray for all these persons. Call them, visit, send a card if you can. God bless you. Continue to enjoy your day and make this a good week. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I hope that you have a flyer. Um, on behalf of the Virtuous Women's Ministry, we're going um, to Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. Yay. Look, yay. We're excited because we haven't done this in, you know, in several years. And the women of purity and outside uh, family and friends are really excited. So please, I'm asking that you share the flyer, you know, tell a friend, tell a family member so that we can have a great time on our bus trip. What's really exciting about our trip is that you will have the option to shop as well as go to the beach. There's one bus that will drop you off at the beach and you could talk to uh, Trustee Gloria Henry about that because she and the kids, they travel to the beach and we had a wonderful time. After we shop, then we're gonna go and um, eat. Okay, then we're gonna travel back 
uh, to our home, Purity Baptist Church and Urban Center. Amen. We're going to have uh, fellowship. We're going to have food. We're going to have fun. We're going to have games. It's exciting. We're going to have movies and prizes, prizes, yay. And so we're really excited. You can make your uh, deposit or pay in full today with Deaconess Barbara Jackson, who will be outside, as well as Sister Sharon and Tally Johnson. If you have any questions, please see any member, really, of, of the Virtuous Women's Ministry. Thank you, and God bless you. Certainly we do honor God and we thank him for our announcements this morning and uh, we are grateful for what he has done on our behalf. Uh, we are certainly prayer, prayerful for the uh, family of uh, Sister Barbara Douglas. Uh, we know that that's a uh, difficult thing. That's even why I called in last Sunday to, uh, to speak to the congregation because that's, that's uh, something that is not what we would want it to be. Uh, but we know that God is able to heal all of our, uh, our wounds and uh, help us as we go along. So we're praying mightily for them. We're praying mightily for Deaconess Johnson uh, in the uh, transition of her nephew, uh, Reverend Pem Pemberton. And then we are praying for uh, Deaconess Betty Adams, the transition of her sister. And uh, certainly we want all of those families to know that we are prayerful and supportive of them as we as we move forward in the work of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We want to uh, thank our uh, ushers. I think I thanked them last week, but it's, I want to say thank you again uh, for hosting the Interdenominational Church Ushers Association of Washington, D.C. and vicinity. I believe a letter was read uh, last week that uh, thanked you uh, for your tireless service, and we appreciate it. Uh, all that you did to make that happen. Circle number two, we thank you as well uh, for providing uh, food stuff for persons to eat so that they would be uh, full and calm during the meeting. Amen. That was a blessing. And uh, we thank, we thank God, we thank God for you. Uh, we are so grateful. Let us uh, prepare our hearts and minds for our giving now. And uh, we know we are going to move forward in that. We realize that our giving, <clears throat> giving is important and essential to the life and the work of the church. Giving of our finances is important, but it's more than finance. I've always said that, and to the chagrin of some, because they, they would prefer me just to concentrate on finance, uh, because we have bills to be paid, and I appreciate knowing that. But there also comes the giving of your time, and the giving of your talent. I have said, if I've said it one time, I've said it a million, that if we have the largest budget that we can conceive, but there are no people here to operate the work, there are no people here to be sure the doors are open, there are no people here to serve the homeless, there are no people here to sing, there are no people here to greet, there are no people here to serve, there are no people here to do, then the large budget won't be helpful. It is about not just our finance, but it's about giving of ourselves. Paul said it this way about the Corinthians when he commended them. He said they first gave of themselves. And when they gave of themselves, then everything else followed. And so we're asking you to give of yourself. Now, I want to uh, say to you that Typically, we have had temple tune-up time at some point during the summer months. And uh, we, we want to, because we you just have, have had so many activities going on, we haven't had it the way that we traditionally have it. But we do have a fifth Sunday in this month, next Sunday. And, uh, and we want to have our temple tune-up time. Uh, immediately following the worship experience, we'll go right into it. And... Uh, we are so glad that Sister Danette Hooper, our wellness ministry, our health and wellness ministry, stand up, uh, Sister Hooper, and that, amen, our, our health and wellness ministry, our health and wellness ministry is, 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 is on target, 
They are ready for us. They are ready for us. We may do another one when, when our T-shirts come, but, but we're going to do this one this, uh, on, on next Sunday. And we're going we're gonna to have, and she'll have some modified things. Uh, and, 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 and for Deaconess Milligan, you don't have to modify it for her. She's going to modify it for herself. You don't, you don't have to. <laughs> yeah. but, but some of us need some modifications. Amen. And uh, we, we, we're going to have a little temple tune-up because we don't want our temples to get out of order. Uh, uh, and we don't, we don't want to lose the momentum that we, that we have had. And it's easy to fall off track uh, with our consistency based on our schedules and all of that. But this will remind us that we have to stay on track. Amen. And that we have to stay focused. It's easy to do that. I've, uh, I've been three to four days a week where I was going five to six just because of my schedule. And uh, so, you, so you, you don't want to fall all the way off. You might slack up, but you don't want to fall back. Amen? And uh, so we are, we, are, we, are, we are trying to keep our temples uh, tuned up. And listen, uh, even if we don't do any exercise, if we just push back from the table a little bit. Yeah, if we just push back from the table a little bit. Instead of having, and you might be able to have some of them, because listen, if you've been used to eating a whole dozen of donuts, nobody's saying nothing, I don't hear. If you've been, if you've been used to eating a whole dozen and you cut it back to two, you're going you're gonna to look, you just, just on that, your temple is going to tune up, you're going you're gonna to start shaking because your temple is tuning up. So, so we, we, we want to have that. Next week, we're going to have that. And uh, we know every month our Christian Ed ministry gives us some health focus, but not all of them may be a physical focus, but it gives us some mindset, some thought to where we're going. And so we, we want to make sure that our minds are in, in the right place. Amen? Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to be in your presence. We thank you for this offering that we are going to give. We pray that what is given would be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom and the furtherance of the ministries of Purity Baptist Church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our ushers are coming at this time. We're in the hands of our music. Trees don't want to be mountains. They just praise the Lord. Mountains never are valleys. They just praise the Lord. The moon and stars are happy in their heavenly space. Their rivers and the oceans, they keep moving from place to place. So we have got to keep serving. Don't want to be dark clouds. Just praise the Lord. Dark clouds never are sunny. Just praise the Lord. A grain of sand is happy sitting on a cool seashore. Or even in the hardest place, makes the desert's floor. So if I About the people and what they say I'm gonna do what Jesus tells me each and every day
Amen. We want to uh, now hear from our, let, 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 first let's give our children's choir. They're, 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 doing, they're doing an excellent job today. They're doing an excellent job today, and they, they look so wonderful. And uh, we, are, we, are just, we are just excited and glad that they are doing uh, so well. We thank Sister Dabney and all of our adult leaders for uh, their work and their willingness to serve uh, with that work. And uh, uh, the, the organ sounds smooth today, don't it? Don't it sound smooth? It sounds smooth. We thank God for... <laughs> I ain't gonna say it over the air because he might not want to say it. But we just thank God for it. We thank God for him being here with us today. And uh, we, are, we are grateful to God for what he, what he has done on our behalf, amen. We thank God always for CJ, amen. Don't we thank God for CJ? Amen, amen. We're so grateful to God for what he's doing uh, on our behalf. Uh, but one, thing, one thing I appreciate about a musician as skilled and as mature as the musician we have today is they, they don't get talked into things by people who want to do something. You know what I mean? Some people just walk up to a music, you ought to sing this, you ought to do this, you ought to sing. You know, people just come up with things out of order people. Just come up with things that they want to see. Huh? Ain't nobody going to say man. In fact, I just made somebody mad. It's okay. Because you made me mad, so we be mad together. Now, we thank God for somebody who's mature enough to know their place in the worship experience and not try to go over because of what somebody else may think. Amen? Amen. So it's okay. You can be upset with me. It's all right. I, don't, I, I praise God for that. Because let me tell you something. If you don't, this is what the, this is what the children say. If you don't have haters, you ain't popping. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. Now, we want to uh, have our, uh, we're going to have our praise dancers come, and then we're going to have our children to sing. Amen? Amen. I was asked some church folk in here to talk back to me. Something about the old hymns of the church that have stood the test of time. And when you found yourself in a jam, you didn't look for nothing with no hip hop beat to it. You look for something that has some meaning to it that can get you through the night. It's an old hymn that we sing sometime at Grace Tabernacle, especially on the first Sunday. There is a name I love to hear. I love to see its worth. Yeah. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweet It tells me of a Savior who died to set me free. It tells me of a Savior's love. The sinner's perfect.
care 
he is always looking out for me. Amen. Can we give our young people another round of applause? Amen. We thank God for them. Uh, Sister Kelly, you actually could deal with them now if you want to because they're, they're going out. Uh, this might be a good time to catch them before they get carried away. <laughs> amen. 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 We thank God. We thank God. We thank God for what we're doing in the midst of it. You know, at one time we had a, a children's church and we want to build our children's Sunday school and church back up again. Uh, but the way to do that is to do it. Amen. Uh, we'll begin small and grow from there. So we thank God for, we thank God for that and for uh, all that is happening. Uh, in that way. Amen. 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 We thank God for the commitment of all of those who are um, leading our uh, young people's choir and their work. I'm always uh, appreciative of all of their work. I appreciate the extra effort, though, that it takes for uh, Sister Sheridan Talley to, to be involved to that point. And um, I, I thank God for it may not mean that much to you, but it means something to me when you have to put forth a little extra effort. See, it's one thing for me to walk all around because I'm, I'm pretty limber, amen? But it's another thing when, you, when you're not that way, but you still try to do it, amen? That, 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 that makes a difference to me. That makes a difference to me. Mother Gloria Womack, we're glad you're here with us, and we thank God for your presence in this uh, service today. And uh, we are certainly grateful for all God is doing in our midst. We're going right in the Bible. Is that all right? I don't know anything to preach but the Bible. John Alexander, Reverend Dr. John Alexander, the pastor of the St. John United Baptist Church in Northwest D.C., reminded me and Pastor Brooks at our ordination that we should not preach the Washington Post, New York Times, D.C. Journal, but we ought to preach the Word of God. He further stated that everything is going down except the word. He said, and if you stand on the word, then what you say will stand because it's standing on a firm foundation. And so we thank God for that. And ever since that day, that was in September of 2000, it's now 2023. And ever since that day, all I've been preaching is the word. I was preaching it before that, but now, after that day, I made sure that only the word would be preached. Amen? Amen. 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 Go with me in your Bibles to Daniel chapter 3. And we are going to verse 16. very familiar passage of scripture. As I often tell you when I preach passages as familiar as this, you preach it the way you want to preach it in your mind. It's all right. You help yourself. Close the way you want to close. But you wait for me by the gate. Don't leave without me and I'll be there after a while. Amen. Daniel chapter 3 and we're going to look at verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, the God that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. I want you to skip down to verse 24 for me. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast in three men in the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, 
I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We're continuing our thought for the weekend on resilience, also bounce back. Amen. Let us pray. Most holy, all wise, eternal God, our Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to come before your presence. We thank you, kind Father, for what you have done in our midst. We thank you, God, because you are an all-sufficient Savior. We thank you because you're kind. We thank you because you're awesome. We thank you because you're wonderful. We thank you because you require things to be done decently and in order. God, we come presenting our order, our decentness to you, praying that you would have your way in the midst of all that we do. God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, ushers. God bless you, ushers. We find ourselves this morning picking up a theme that we really began on Thursday in Bible study. This theme that we can carry into our time of fellowship with the ashram and that we now in some way conclude today is resilient. I've shared with you in each of those occasions that resilience, the word resilience has to do with how we come out of, how we deal with whatever difficulty or whatever situation may be over our heads. Resilience has to deal with our bounce back. How do we, when done with all that we have gone through, how are we standing and how do we fare? I suggested yesterday, and I want to unpack a little bit more today, that in order for our bounce back to be one of victory, we are going to have to be certain that we go into our journey with a mind that is set on coming out victoriously. Many of us find ourselves in defeat because we had a defeated mindset even going into it. There are persons who will say, well, we did that before and it didn't work then and so it's not going to work now. Well, there's no point of us putting that up because if we put that up, they ain't going to look at it, they ain't going to deal with it, they, ain't gonna, they didn't look at it last time, so they ain't going to look at it this time. Sometimes a defeated mindset can cause us to lose out and miss out on our best blessings. But more than that, it can cause us to be hindrances to the gospel being spread rather than help to promote the kingdom of God moving forward. We realize that there are times in our lives where we have all at some point been a hindrance rather than a help. A hindrance because we did not do or a hindrance because we were out of order in our doing. And either way, no matter how we look at it, we become a hindrance to the kingdom moving forward. But we have to understand that even in our own personal moving forward, even in our own personal journeys, even in our own personal uh, 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 steps that we take toward doing what God would have for us to do, it is about the battle that happens in our mind that creates the deliberate outcome that we are looking for. I have suggested all weekend that we're going to have to choose which lane we want to be in. Whether we want to be, have or be referred to with unshakable faith, whether we want to be faithful or whether we want to struggle. 
And once we choose the lane that we're going to be in, then our mindset and all that we do even up to the point that we get into whatever we're going through will be shaped by that choice. And may I tell you that everybody's going to have a battle at some point. Everybody's going to have some difficulty that they face at some point. Everybody's going to have a mountain to climb. Everybody's going to have a river that must be crossed. Everybody's going to have some deficit that they're going to have to deal with. Everybody's going to run up against a brick wall. And so you have to make your decision whether you're going to sit there and knock yourself out on the wall. Or whether you're going to find a rope or some kind of way to climb over the wall and allow it not to be an obstacle even though it stands there. Some of us are waiting for obstacles to move out of our way when the truth of the matter is the obstacle can stay there but I can climb over it. I don't need, I don't need him to move all of my mountains. I don't need him to, to, to cover up all of my valleys, but, but I just need him to give me the strength to climb. I, I need him to give me the strength to walk around. I need him to give me the strength to get over, to, to, to get through, to, to build up upon. I need the strength to do it. He doesn't have to move the mountain. Because the mountain for me may be a blessing for somebody else. So leave the mountain there because it may be their blessing. But help me to get over it. That's what happens with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were facing would seem to be a life-threatening, insurmountable obstacle. That their choices led them to. I think it's important for us to pull that out, that, that, that even if we're making the right decision, sometimes our choices lead us to consequences that seem like we cannot handle them. Whether you say yes or whether we say no, whether you go or whether you don't go, either way, you're going to face some consequences. Every decision has a consequence. So while we're struggling over worrying about what's going to happen if we make this decision, if you don't make it, something's still going to happen. While we're struggling about whether we should go or whether we should do, while you're struggling, something is still going to happen. Either way, there's a consequence to the action. Whether you take no action, because taking no action is, 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 is illusionary in its sense. Because even when you take no action, that's an action. The action is, I'm taking no action. These three men were determined to live for God. They made up in their mind that they were going to live for him, and so they chose the lane of unshakable faith. They were determined that no matter what comes, no matter what rises, no matter what happens, I'm going to live for God. And, 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 and normally when you make that kind of decision, because when you make that decision, oh, you feel so good. Oh, for God I live and for God I die. Can't nothing turn me around now. Oh, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey. That's until something rises <laughs> that gives you another option on your journey. And so, these young men determined that they were going to serve the Lord no matter what. King Nebuchadnezzar had created some golden images and 
stuff that he wanted them to bow down to. And every time he played his music, everybody in the land had to worship these little G-O-D gods. May I tell you that this kind of foolishness is still going on today? And I'm not even going as blatant as what we see in our political system or anything like that. I'm not even going to deal with that. We already see that. That's pretty clear. But even in the church, even in the pew, yes, even sometimes in the pulpit, we have this kind of thing going on. And, 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 and what happened was Nebuchadnezzar decided that he was going to, what he had raised as the greatest was going to be the greatest, but, but these boys knew something different. They had been to a Sunday school that was committed to creating biblically literate scholars. They weren't concerned about who was teaching them, how they were taught, when it happened. They were concerned about creating biblically literate scholars. And when you create a biblically literate scholar, then they understand what to do in spite of what's being said around them. Deacon Watson pulled it out today. He said, listen, I may say something wrong up here. I may, but he said, what you need to do is have yourself prepared and know the word enough to know that when I'm saying it wrong, because you won't know that it's wrong unless you are a biblically literate scholar. And so because they were biblically literate and they took every step to make it happen, then they determined, listen, I don't care who, what music plays. <laughs> I mean, it's good music. I can dance to it if that's what you want to do. Uh -huh. I can do the wobble, whatever you want me to do. I can do, but, but, but I cannot bow. I cannot bow to your God. Because your God is not like my God. <laughs> and, and, and your king is not like my king. And so, so because of this, they, 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 they had some words with the king. And I want you to look in your Bible. Yeah, because, because, because we're going to be biblically literate. We're already uh, pushing toward that. And... and uh, and, and, and the king had already challenged them, is, is that God going to deliver you out of my hands? But, but if you notice the difference in the word God, depending on who was talking. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. When you see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego talking, their God has a capital G. Yeah, I, I, I want some biblically literate. I want some biblical. Can, uh, can I get some biblically literate scholars here? Yeah, now, 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 they had a capital G on their God. But, but then when Nebuchadnezzar was talking and when they were talking about all this, there, there was, you notice a difference. The words sound the same. Lord have mercy. <laughs> they look the same. But, but there's a difference because this is a lowercase g. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, you got some things that sound the same. You got some stuff that sound like church. You got some folk that sound like preaching. You got some folk that seem like they serve and some folk that sound like it, but, but the case is wrong. They're on the wrong side and on the wrong team and it seems like it's all right until you really look at it and you realize, wait a minute, that's a lower case when it should be a capital letter. And so, the boy said, listen, King, our God, whom we serve, we're not going to spend a lot of time going back and forth with you. <laughs> I'll tell you two places I'm not going, that's back and forth. Um, we're not going to spend any time going back and forth with you. I'm going to tell you this one time, and, and then you can do what you want to do. And, 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 and before I go, sometimes that's what you got to do with, with the enemy. You can't spend a lot of time going back and forward with the devil. 
and with his children. You see, 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 the devil don't always come with a pitchfork and a tail and horns wearing red. Sometimes the devil wear corsages, gloves, suits, Stacy Adams, Etienne Agner, St. John Knit. Bruno Capello. See, you, 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 got to, you got to be careful. Because see, we're looking for one thing and, 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 it, and it's another whole other thing. Ain't all devils slew-footed. I know. I know we call him a slew-footed conjurer. But, but, but ain't, every devil ain't slew-footed. Some of them walking upright. <laughs> and, and so... So he said, listen, I'm not going back and forth with you over this. Boy, I'm not going to keep on going arguing with you. The God that we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of your hand. Now, now, now that's just, that's remaining faithful. Remaining faithful says what I trust him what I trust him to do and what I know he will do. That's remaining faithful. Remember, I gave you three lanes. That's remaining faithful. Yeah, I know what my God can do. And he'll deliver you out of your hands, O king, lowercase. I don't want you to think you're the king of kings, so it's lowercase king. I, I, I can remain faithful and believe that he will deliver me out of my hand. But now we want to switch lanes to unshakable faith. And look at what they say. Be it, but if not. Let's see, we're getting unshakable faith now. But if not, be it known unto the old king, lowercase k, that we will not serve thy lowercase g God nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Now that's unshakable faith now. See, see, faithful says, as long as everything is all right and I can see it coming, then, then I'll, I, I, I'll remain. But when you get unshakable faith, that says, even when it don't work out my way, even when it don't go the way I want it to go, even when it don't turn out the way I want it to turn out, even when it don't look the way I, even when my outcome is not what I want it to be, I still want you to know. Even if he don't deliver me. If the healing don't come. If the deliverance don't come. If the situation still stays the way that it stays, no matter what, I want you to know that the God I serve is still able to make a way out of no way. He's still able to do what he said he would do. And notice, they weren't upset, they weren't sad, they weren't depressed. Because some folk will say that, but they say it's so depressed, you can't believe they got faith no how. But just as enthusiastically as they said what he will do, just as enthusiastically they reported that even if he doesn't. Now notice what that means. That means that if he doesn't deliver us, we're going to be consumed by this fire. But even at the risk of being consumed, they wanted to be sure that the king knew, but more importantly, that their God knew, that they trusted in him no matter what. And the one thing that we know about God is, he gonna protect his name. He's he, he not going to let you fail, uh, uh, especially he's not going to let his name fail. Uh, and so, so they said, listen, and so the, the king got upset, got mad, he threw him in the fiery furnace. I told you, you're going to preach it the way you want to preach it. Go ahead and preach it your way. He threw him in the fiery furnace. 
And the scripture says that even the people that took them to the door, to the mouth of the furnace, got burned. Because the scripture indicates that it was seven times hotter than it usually is. I ain't going to take too much time on this. I've said it so many times before. But when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask them because, see, if I say this convection oven is seven times hotter, I can look on the dial and see this seven times hotter. I can just turn the dial up and it tell me 350, 450, whatever. But, but back in this time, there were no dials. I want to know how they knew it was seven times hotter. But I had to wait till I get to heaven to find that out. But nonetheless, they turned it up seven times hotter than normal. May I tell you that just before your deliverance, sometimes the heat will turn up hotter than you've ever seen it. Just before God brings you through, sometimes that dial on your heat will turn up Sometimes that dial on your furnace will turn up. Sometimes your problem will turn up and it seems like we can have the worst things happen to us. Just before God get ready to bring us out. But no matter how high it turns up, when you have unshakable faith, that's simply a sign to you that God is getting ready to move. When your fire and your flame turns up just a little bit higher than it used to be, those who have unshakable faith ought to realize that that's simply God saying, I am with you. That's God saying, I'm in the fire with you. I'm in the battle with you. I'm going to stand by your side. When it turns up a little hotter than normal, that's God saying, trust me. If you put your hand in my hand, if you trust me the way you should, then everything is going to be all right. I've learned that when my battles start raging a little more, to just start calling on his name a little louder, where I was saying Jesus sort of low before, now I'm crying out, Jesus, 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 have mercy on me. And the scripture said that it threw him in the fire. And the Bible says that at a certain point, the king looked down there to check on him. He just knew they were going to be burnt to smithereens and they were going to be ashes because the people that put them in there got burnt up so certainly they should be burnt and I can see the king standing before that furnace great God in Zion trying to figure out what happened now can you see him wiping his eyes trying to figure out what's going on and the king had this report I knew that we threw in three but now I see four and the fourth one looks like the son of God I don't know how you feel about it but I'm so glad that the God that I serve is able to step in my furnace. He's able to live in my despair. He's able to walk into my hurt. He's able to walk into my pain. And he'll walk with me. He'll talk with me. He'll tell me that I am his own and the joy 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 this joy that I have the world didn't get it and the world can't take it away he is there no matter what no matter what I go through I'm going to tell this little story and then I'm going to my seat 
This is Deacon Watson's favorite story. There was a little, little grandbaby, and uh, the grandfather was there, and the mother was there, and, and uh, the mother said, okay, we're going to put the baby in the playpen, and we're going to leave the baby there because the baby got to learn that we're not going to pick him up and take him out the playpen, take him out of his playpen every time he cried. Yeah, we, we, we don't want the baby to think that every time he cry, he, he, we're going to pick him up and take him out of his playpen. And so uh, the baby started crying, the grandfather instinctively <laughs> walked over to the playpen and got ready to pick up the baby. And the, and the daughter said, no, daddy, don't pick the baby up because I'm trying to teach the baby <laughs> that, 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 that we're not going to pick him up every time he cried. And granddaddy said, okay, all right. He went back and sat down a little while, but he kept looking. He kept, his eye kept roll, going over there. And as long as everything was all right, he was fine. But, but then the baby started crying again. And he tried to sit with it a little while. And, and then all of a sudden he looked to see if the daughter was looking. And he ran over to the playpen and tried to pick up. And, 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 and the daughter yelled, daddy, I told you. I'm trying to, 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 to learn, teach the baby how not to cry, how not to think we're going to cry, that he got to stay some time in, in, in the playpen. We can't have him being held all the time. He got to stay in this playpen some time. And, 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 so, and so the baby, the granddaddy went back to his seat. And after a while, the baby started crying. And when he cried, she looked out there and granddaddy didn't come. And then she looked out there again and she looked in the, at the playpen and, and the baby was in the playpen. <laughs> but granddaddy got in the playpen <laughs> with the baby. <laughs> and, 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 and the daughter said, Daddy, uh, why would you get in the playpen with the baby? <laughs> And the granddaddy said, you told me I couldn't deliver him out of it. <laughs> but that didn't mean <laughs> that I couldn't get in there with that baby. <laughs> I'm so glad <laughs> that we serve the kind of God <laughs> that even if he don't bring you out, <laughs> he'll get right in there with you. <laughs> he won't leave you. <laughs> he won't forsake you. <laughs> but he'll stay right there. He'll stay right there with you. You don't believe he'll stay right there? One Friday on a hill. Oh, you knew I was going there. Call Golgotha, my Lord and your Savior. They put nails. They put nails in his hand, nails in his feet, a crown of thorn on his head. And can I tell you what he did? He stayed right there. He died. Didn't he die? He died. Shallow. Shallow. He died. They put him in. A bar or two. He stayed right there all night Friday. Stayed right there all day Saturday. But just before the breaking of day, while the dew was still on the road, early, 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 on Sunday morning, he got up. With all power, if you believe he got up, say yeah, 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 yeah. He got up since he got up, since he got up. Since he got up, I can get up too. Because the God I serve, thank you, is well able to bring me out 
of every fire. And if he don't bring me out, he'll get in there with me. And either way, my bounce back will be greater than I've ever seen before. As we stand all over the building, maybe there is somebody here that does not know the Lord in the pardon of their sins. Maybe there is somebody here that does not receive Jesus as their Lord and their Savior. Maybe there's somebody on conference call. There's somebody on Facebook. There's somebody out there in, 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 in our um, website. Somebody on YouTube. You're listening to this message. You just stumbled across it. You didn't even know you were going to, you ain't never heard of a too good. What is, who is that? But you're hearing the gospel and, and you know you need Jesus. I'm going to tell you three, why, three reasons why you need him. One, because you have a past. You can't wipe the slate clean, but he can. Two, because you need a friend. He knows the worst, but he believes the best. That's a friend. Three, because he holds the future. Who else are you going to trust? Dr. Alexander would say everything in this world is going down. But the word of God. Trust him and never doubt. And if you'd like to begin a personal relationship with Jesus today, we're going to pray this prayer together. And if you're praying it for the first time, the scripture reminds us that if we confess with our mouths and believe with our hearts, that Christ was risen from the dead, and that he is Lord of our lives, then we shall be saved. We try to make it so difficult. Salvation is based on confession and belief. When you say it, say it with all your heart and your mind. And for those that are saved, this is just a reaffirming of our faith. Let's pray this prayer together. Lord Jesus, I invite you into my life. I believe you died for me. And that your blood pays for my sins and provides me with the gift of eternal life. By faith, I receive that gift and I acknowledge you as my Lord and my Savior. Amen, amen, amen. Can we give God praise for somebody? Somebody on Facebook, somebody on conference call that received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Now maybe there might be somebody here in the sanctuary today. Uh, it's all right, brother cameraman, you can pan today. I want you to pan as much as you can today. Yeah, you, 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 we'll be panning and looking at empty pews today. I want them to see these full pews today, amen, pan. Cause I got people looking, trying to count how many members I got. In my business morning. <laughs> oh, I saw you, let's just keep panning, pan so they can see. Count. Haters, count. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Now, uh, there may be somebody here that is without a church home. And we want you to, uh, we want you to know that purity is not a perfect church. I'm not a perfect pastor. We're not a perfect people. But together we serve a perfect God. And we want you to be a part of us if you'd like. If that's where the Lord is leading you. So if it's so, you can come down the aisle. We'll receive you. You can type in the comment, I am home, and we'll reach out to you. But if you hear the voice of the Lord, harden not your heart. Will there be just one? Will there be just one? Will there be just one? Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. You may be seated. may be seated in the presence of the Lord. 
what a wonderful service we've had. Amen. Amen. What, a, what a wonderful weekend we have had. And uh, we thank God for, for what he has done in our lives. I'm so grateful for each and every one of you being here today. I said to a friend of mine, uh, we were talking and uh, talking about different things related to the church. And um, talking about, you know, we want to expand, we want to. I said, you know, what I really want to see, I, it's not about, for me, exploding and uh, that kind of thing. Because if you explode so much, you, you, don't, you don't know who you're pastoring. Uh, and I don't want to limit us based on that. But my greater goal is to see people who are growing, who are healthy, who are biblically and spiritually literate, who understand how to navigate storms, who are not falling by the wayside, being blown to and fro by every wind and doctrine that comes, every little group, every little thing, they, 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 they're torn. My, my goal, if I can see that, if the pews are never completely full, because see, you got, you got so many on Facebook and so many everywhere else. So if the pews are not completely full, if I can see growing, healthy, wiser, smarter, stronger believers, then God's kingdom has been magnified. We got too many right now growing on on, 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 on just having people come in. Somebody said, I got, had 200 decisions, 200 things. But, but what did they do after that decision? What was done to maintain them? What was done to keep them? How are they growing now? One month later, 30 days later, where are they? Are they still growing? I want to see the decisions for Christ, absolutely, because I want folk to be saved. But the responsibility of the church is to make sure that we grow. and that you are better. And that's what we are looking for in this day and time. We're going to end the service, I'm gonna say about 15 minutes so you can um, talk and do, and then right at the top of the hour, we'll start the meeting with the Sunday school and we'll take not more than 15 minutes to do that, okay? So, uh, and then we'll be able to, to, to go. Actually, we'll have about 10 minutes of fellowship. So about five minutes to the top of the hour, we'll, uh, we'll start the meeting. Uh, for Sunday school. Amen? And I'll keep you 15 minutes. Listen, if you ain't never been to Sunday school, you don't know nothing about Sunday school, you ain't, you think because you're a child, you ain't got to go to Sunday school, just stay for the Sunday school meeting. And, uh, <laughs> and we'll help you along the way. Amen? Can we give God praise again for all of those that work? Thank God for our musicians. Thank God for our videographers. Thank God for our sound ministry, our ushers, our nurses, all of our officers, leaders, our ministers, all of those who have served today. Thank God for you being here today. Now, I didn't know LaCasha was a nurse. I, I knew she was an usher. And I saw a couple of times coming up here putting the, 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 um, my tea. And I said, well, she's just doing that because maybe, you know, they just, that was a bad Sunday for her. They couldn't do it. And then when I saw that on top of her, I said, wait a minute now. <laughs> <laughs> Something is different. And so, Lakesha, we thank God. We thank God for you and for your willingness to serve. Um, I looked out there and saw she looked so much like a grandmother. And then I looked over there and looked at Babs, and she's sitting there looking like Jenny Logan, reincarnated. <laughs> and uh, I mean, with them pearls on and the way she got that hair hanging. That is Jenny Logan sitting there. You can't tell me that's not Jenny Logan sitting right there. And, uh, and so we, we are grateful to God. We're grateful to God for that. Let's look to the Lord uh, for our dismissal. Um, uh, we want to certainly know that God is on our side. He's fighting our battle. And make sure that you choose the right lane. and Hold that lane so that your bounce back will bring you victory. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, now, henceforth, and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God be with you. And be here next week. We've got our, our temple tune-up time. Uh, Sister Hooper's ready to work us out. Amen. Amen. God bless you.